you're listening to this program, chances are you're an LSU fan. And I got kind of a trio. We're going to have a little bit of an ADD LSU segment here. I think we're going to start with the Eric. 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 Uh, we're going to start with the Gilbert News. Uh, then we'll get some of the offensive linemen committee. And then we'll get to how these new hirings may be settling in on this LSU staff because it is pretty fascinating uh, in terms of with so many new faces in that staff. I think there's a lot of high risk versus high reward potential, right? Do you have this environment where everybody collaboratively, collaboratively just clicks? Or with so many new faces, do things get a bit volatile? We'll, we'll break that down a little bit. But let's start with the Eric Gilbert news. Uh, I like how Zral said on Twitter best. I'm sure everybody will take this news in stride. Uh, I'm sure there's no irrational anger over this. Uh, let me be clear. If, if, if you're looking for me to like kind of stomp my feet and be mad about this or... Gilbert leaving to go to Florida, um, you're not going to get that here. Uh, I, I've, I, I've said it before. I think I came out a little harder than the news originally broke. Not a lot of critical thinking went into it. And look, man, um, the bottom line, first and foremost, look, from a pure football, pure talent perspective, is it a bummer to lose a cat of Eric Gilbert's uh, caliber? Absolutely, right? From a pure football perspective, no doubt. I mean, Remember when LSU was 3-5 and five? and we were talking about potential ways to right the ship or kind of, you know, how bright the future may be looked? And, and, and one of the core pillars in a lot of that optimism was Eric Gilbert. So there's no shying away from, you know, he, he was kind of viewed as one of the saving graces when things looked at their darkest. So it, it's a hit football-wise. But it's insurmountable. And that's where we arrived at the fact that, like, no, it is absolutely not insurmountable uh look no one player is bigger than the lsu program and and so the bottom line becomes you know this cat has to do whatever's right for him and if that is going to play for florida well then i wish him nothing but the best right first and foremost i hope that gilbert finds whatever he is whatever it is that he's looking for um i've talked to some people and 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 i think eligibility is going to be an interesting thing with Gilbert, um, just academically, I'll, I'll, I'll be intrigued to see what ends up happening there. Uh, but whatever, it doesn't matter, right? I, I don't want this cat to be held out for eligibility or anything else. I hope he gets to school right. Like I said, I hope the mental health gets right. And then, uh, and then I hope that he maximizes his football potential on the field. Remember, you are LSU. You are one of the top five, top ten programs in all of college football consistently year in and year out. There is no one player that is bigger than LSU. And I mean, correlation does not equal causation, right? That, that's something we always have to be wary of. But I don't think it's completely not worth mentioning here to reinforce the point that no one player is bigger than LSU. The two games where you did not have Gilbert, you came away with two big wins. That's not because Gilbert was out. So that is, again, not what I'm saying. What I am saying, though, is that you have proven, and you proved last year, that you can win without him. Cole Taylor was not near the talent that Eric Gilbert was, and you still got those wins. It's all because Cole Taylor knew to loosen his shoe late in the game versus Florida. No, real talk, though, uh, as Musso pointed out, if we get back to a normal world and... And, uh, you know, game day's back and signs are back. The signs were already going to be golden with the shoe game for Florida next year. You now got a little extra juice if a Rick Gilbert ends up getting eligible and is able to play. But like I said, on this show, my opinion, the bottom line, I hope he finds what he is looking for, get his mental right, get his physical right, and uh, maximize the, you know, the, the, the wild amount of potential and this cat has. I think you're going to be fine here uh, as, as far as tight end goes. You're not going to be as good. You know, look, I still love the potential of a Cole Taylor. Um, on ironically, right, all shoe jokes aside, I thought he battled as a freshman. He was obviously, he's just too young to be playing, like physically I'm talking about, right? The cat had a little bit of string being fact to him, but he is 6'7". He can add to that height a lot. You know, I got a new offensive coordinator and Pete who comes in. He sees a 6'7 tight end. I think as an OC, that makes you happy. Remember, Pete's talked about wanting to customize his offense around the talent that he currently has. And so uh, good luck to Rick Gilbert going forward into the future. Um, it looks like the future got a bit brighter for LSU's offense 
As far as offensive line is concerned, as they came away with a couple of big commits over the weekend, obviously offensive line has been the topic du jour around these parts lately as LSU tries to establish a more consistent pipeline for, for, for winning in the trenches. And it's something that Austin Thomas, I think, gave. I mean, I loved the Austin Thomas interview from Friday. I don't know about y'all. I'd recommend going back and listening to it on Facebook because, uh, excuse me, on YouTube, uh, because he, he, I thought he was very earnest. I thought he was very genuine. And I thought he gave you some fascinating insight into roster management and not just filling the roster with bodies, but talented bodies. And look, Louisiana this year in this 2021 class that is about to wrap up Wednesday, uh, there was a dearth of offensive line talent. Uh, I don't think there is one offensive lineman ranked in the top 500 recruits in the country. That is pretty rare. I mean, Louisiana definitely does not produce alignment at a huge rate. It's still pretty rare to be that down. So it rubber bands, though, from that to this, where now the number one player in the state for 2022 is Will Campbell. He's an offensive tackle, the highest-rated offensive tackle, as we said, in the last 20 years, if you look in Louisiana, besides Lyle Collins and uh, Cam Robinson. So the the exact big-time cornerstone left tackle that we've been talking about on this show for a while, he chooses you over Alabama, everybody else. Will Campbell from Neville, 3-1 great, choosing to throw his lot in with LSU. Good for James Craig, but the news got even better as you didn't just get the number one tackle in the state, you got the number two tackle as well with Bo Bordelon joining the mix. Obviously, Ben Bordelon, he's, uh, he's an LSU legacy. Of course, if you love that 2019 LSU football team, you probably love the 2019 White House video. To get the gat dance, uh, and that's his mom, the blonde that basically set the internet on fire. And look, man, um, Ben, I get it. I have a, a very attractive mother as well. Um, it's 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 like Tyrion Lannister says when he's talking in Game of Thrones about how to kind of handle these you know these vulnerable attack points that people can hit you with. You have to wrap yourself up in them. You have to cloak yourself in them. Right. That's why Tyrion le- leans into being a little person and being. A big grotesque. That's why I myself have leaned in to having a hot mom my entire life. Uh, it's just what you have to do. It's the best way to make it through it. But outside of that, outside of any viral videos, uh, look, Bo Bordelon, he's, he, he's not as high rated as Will Campbell, but I still think there's a ton of value there, mainly because he's like 6'5", 300. Like the, the body remains really good. And, and we all know that stars, like sometimes they hit, sometimes they don't. They're just indicators of kind of the – you know, the, the 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 best projection. But you never know how these things worked out. I remember a cat, Clint Bowling, that I grew up playing football with, and I left, you know, rated way higher than he did. He was, like, barely a three-star, blah, blah. What'd he do? He went on to start three years at Georgia and then played ten years in the NFL. Okay, so star ratings mean nothing. The bottom line is that when you have Louisiana offensive line talent, you have to keep them in state. And although it's a long way out, LSU did just that yesterday grabbing commitments from Will Campbell and Bo Borlon. So nice job by James Craig, Ed Ogeron, and the Tigers. And, and, and the kind of final piece I wanted to hit on here are the new hires settling in. Because we talked about it on Friday, the chemistry is a huge risk, huge reward proposition with this many new faces, right? Sometimes when you, and like we said, when you look at Pete's and you look at Jones, uh, here are guys that you have given their big opportunity. I think that that creates an earnestness. That creates a lot of motivation for them to make you right for taking a chance on them, right? And so when you have guys entering from that more humble standpoint and no ego, I think there's a very good chance that you end up with a collaborative staff, that you end up with with, with a staff that is willing to compromise, willing to go back and forth and really work together well. However, I said high risk as well as high reward. And obviously with that many new faces, it is hard to exactly know how that mix is going to hit. So it could end up being bottled. It could end up not working for what it is worth. And, of course, people you talk to around the program are going to be optimistic at this time. For what it's worth, I've heard that things are off to a very good start, that Pete's and Jones are working closely together. I was also talking to some around the program. We'll talk to Verge about it next, about uh, Baker getting the co-defensive coordinator title. Is there kind of, you know, like a potential – uh, uh, power struggle there. Like, uh, it's what we said Friday. We, all, all we care about on this show is we want a clear delineation of power. And I do believe that that's in place. Uh, Durante Jones is the defensive coordinator, Baker is the linebackers coach. 
Now, Blake Baker can be a great resource for Jones to kind of pick his brain, given his D.C. experience, especially on the college level. But when push comes to shove, Jones will be making the final decisions on defense. Pete's will be making the final decisions on offense. Two guys whose resumes and journeys to get this point mirror each other, and two guys who, from what I have heard, are working very well together thus far. So uh, mixed in, look, a mixed bag for the weekend for LSU football with the Gilbert News, but then you get the big commitments. I'm excited about the new hires. It's going to be a fascinating and very important spring football coming up for this LSU football team. And we'll talk to Virgil Osbury about it next here on OTB, 104.5, 104.3, and 94.7 ESPN. 